share with you what I've discovered along the way. In what follows, the events of the reign remain unchanged. The events still all happened, but the motivations behind them are explained somewhat differently to those house brick sized books written over the decades in an attempt to explain the behaviour of Henry VIII. So, we shall tarry no further, turn the waffle button to off, and I'll show you what I've found out. So, back to Holbein and his portrayal of Henry VIII. We all know it well. There are several versions copied from Holbein's original, which was actually a life-size mural painted to grace the privy chamber at the Palace of Whitehall. The palace, unfortunately, was destroyed by fire in 1698. Nonetheless, reproductions of that image were in circulation and it became the template for most of the impressions that followed. And so we are left with this imposing image of a supremely confident-looking man, towering above all those who stood about him, likely to face down those who even dare think about defiance of his sovereignty. And although the images are silent, from somewhere in this portrayal is a great booming voice of authority. In addition, this depiction has attracted accusations of gluttony, drunkenness, fornication, and even lechery. 500 years later, and that portrayal hasn't really changed. I'm mad for you. I dream of you at night. I long for you by day. I'm no good with any other woman. I think of nothing but you. Of you and me playing dog and bitch. Of you and me playing horse and mare. Of you and me in every way. I want to fill you up night after night. I want to fill you up with sons. Bastards. They would be bastards. One word more and I'll strike you. One word more. Without marriage, if you and I have sons, they will be bastards. This is Henry Salter, his private book of Psalms, which includes annotations in his own hand. It is likely, as a devout Christian, this small book would have accompanied him where'er he went. Today it's kept in the British Library, and to quote from its description of the exhibit, it is said, Commissioned by Henry VIII, this Psalter is the most sumptuous production of the French scribe and illuminator Jean Mallard. Several images depict Henry as King David, the annotations in Henry's own hand show how strongly he identified with the godly Old Testament king. And so to my mind, for a portrayal of the king, the Psalter deserves as much, if not more, attention than the Holbein work and all those copies that came after Holbein. Unlike the copyists, the Frenchman Mallard does not follow the German Holbein in his perception and portrayal of Henry VIII. Every picture tells a story, don't it? Why then is it that we continue to accept the hard man Henry version over and above the more simple and thus probably more accurate and certainly more personal portrayal of the man who was Henry VIII? The drama event of the year reaches its shattering conclusion. I am your king. Only as long as I allow you to live. Ray Winston and Sean Dean star in the ITV drama premiere, Henry VIII, Sunday at 9 on ITV1. I well, think it's fair to say that portrayal is more in the style of Holbein than Mallard. But what is Henry VIII famous for? apart from that Holbein painting and everything that flowed from it. How do we know him? What do we know of the man himself? This man, the product of a German portrait artist, this oh-so-famous king. 
but what was the man's legacy? What part did Henry Tudor really play in the history of England? Did he really play the lead? Or was he just a bit part player? Well, he had six wives. He was inclined towards sport when he was young and then probably ate and drank too much as he aged, which caused him serious and probably terminal health problems. He was beyond all doubt religious and a lifelong Catholic. Um, what else? Um, he had a son with a mistress, Elizabeth Blount, years before the future Edward VI was born. Um, but aside from that, there's not a great deal more to add about the man who was Henry VIII, save to say he was something of a, a gullible nitwit. Of all the historians who have studied the Tudor period, one of the finest and most prolific was Sir Geoffrey Elton. Sir Geoffrey wrote extensively about the history of the 16th century, producing invaluable work on the Constitution, the law, the Reformation, of course, and even the discipline of history itself. But when he turned his attention to the man that was Henry VIII, well, he covered that subject in just 27 